Hello everyone, I'm Jeyoko. I'm a UX designer on the calendar team. This session is about customer-centric design. Today, we would like to share with you a few cases of how we use custom feedback to help shape one UI. Let's begin with a story about how the design of our calendar app evolved thanks to the customer input. There has been a major design debate for the calendar app in One UI 4. In One UI 3, the calendar app was designed to show as many days as possible as you can see here. We wanted the user to see all their upcoming events at once. Also, when adding events, users were shown all the event options so that they could easily change everything about the event from one screen. But we found that many of these assumed benefits one in line with user score, so in one year four, we fundamentally changed how users view and add events. First, we studied how many events users add to their calendars. It turns out, most people have three events or fewer each day. Then we asked, how do users add events? We found that although we offer many options for events, most users only enter the title and time of their event. They rarely add places, settlers, or use the other event setting we offered. In addition, through users' interviews, we found that many users enter the time and details of event in the event title. The linked design of kind of for one year four was based on these findings. We optimized the kind to show up to three events each day at the default font size. We also added a quick add menu, so users can add events by simply entering the title and time at the bottom of the screen. Compared to One UI 3, the calendar is now more focused on its essential function of being a calendar rather than try to show as many events as possible. This let us show a few events more clearly, and the quick add menu let users create events quickly and easily. You just love the new design and welcome the changes, but we learn even more from users after reading the design change. Some users wanted to see more events in month view, so we added an option that allowed them to adjust the size of event title by changing the font size. Users can set a smaller font size to see more events in their calendar. We've also added an option to adjust how bright event colors are, with this, users can make their event price so that they stand out or muted so events don't steal attention from the calendar. Our aim is this update was to come up with design that catered to many users' needs as possible, based on user research and feedback. We also wanted to allow for more customization, as customization is an important aspect of Samsung's design philosophy. After the one year four update, our rating on the Galaxy Store jumped from 1.71 to 4.02. This showed us that users appreciated that we listened to their voices. Are we done design calendar? No. We will continue to pay attention to the user's feedback and strive to offer an even better calendar app in one year five. Candy is just one example of how one UI have evolved based on user feedback. Next, Jiun Jo will talk about how we use customer-centric design to redesign the status app. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jin Hun Jo. What do you do after you buy a new phone? You will probably start setting up your phone to make your phone your own. I guess. This setup includes things like restoring backup data from your previous phone, setting personal favorite picture as wallpaper, and securing your phone with lock type, and so much more. Likewise, settings have a significant impact on the onboarding experience. To make this welcoming experience, it should be effortless to set up and easy to find the exact settings menu that you are looking for. However, this is complicated than expected. Do you know how many menus are there in the settings app? Yeah, surprisingly, there are more than 1,500 menus in settings. The number actually surprised me as well. 
Because of this, users often wonder where the menu they are looking for is located or what the menu is called. There are a lot of users who don't make full use of the settings app because they don't know what's in there. It makes the search feature extremely important. We've been constantly improving the search feature from One UI 3 to One UI 5. So let's see how we analyze the causes of problems and solve them. The chart you see shows what menus are used often by the Samsung Galaxy S21 users. Well, we saw that the menus related to network connections like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and those related to apps were used a lot. Plus, we found out that users were searching for a lot of menus they have trouble finding, rather than the main menu categories in the settings app. In particular, we found that a big chunk of the searches was about the battery. As a result of this analysis, we came up with two design improvements. First, let's show the keywords the users want on top, while an accurate search result was all that was previously considered, we now provide the search results using related data like those that are relevant to the search keyword, as well as menus that are frequently visited by users. We provide these search results in the top hitch area at the top. If you haven't found what you wanted from top hitch, you can look through the search results underneath. We place the menus more relevant to the search keyword high on the list, so they can be seen easily. We expect that users will easily learn which category the menu they search belongs to. So we have added category names and icons in the search results to aid their understanding. Second, we added tags. You are probably familiar with them being used in social media. Well, now they're provided in the settings app as well. There isn't just one item. Instead, we've grouped various items in settings by scenario and suggest them together. This allows users to choose tags depending on the situation they're in and see the related settings at once. OK, before we look at the second data analysis, Let's see a video where users try to look for menus in the Settings app. The user looked up the navigation bar menu in the Settings app. He visited several places to find the menu. It seems that he had a hard time guessing where the menus were. Let's look at this chart. We found that 89% of the time, users moved along the optimal or shortest path. 11% of the time, users were being lost, unable to find the optimal path. In other words, most users are able to locate the shortest path to find the menu they want to set up and set it up easily. However, we want all menus in settings to be easily discoverable even for the 11% of the situations where the users couldn't find the menu. So, let's use our data to see which menus were difficult to find. These are the menus the users had the most trouble finding. The navigation bar, as you've seen in the video before, seems to be a really hard one to find. Since there are many users who have no problem navigating settings and finding menus, we should be very careful about changing a menu's location. So what we did is to add related keywords at the bottom of the settings screen so users would not give up looking for a menu even if they get lost. If you have the feeling that the menu you are looking for might be at a certain location, but you don't find the menu there, you can go to the bottom of the page you visited to view related keywords. We analyzed the data we can get and added the menus they had actually been looking for in this area. See, the navigation bar that people find difficult to search for is in general management. So this has been the story about how we understand people's needs and improve design. Next.
Kyung Hoon Han will talk about the process of determining the best design in an actual user environment, in this case, in the Samsung headset. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kyung Hoon Han. Field testing is one of the more important processes of UX design. Designers get to observe how their own designs work in the real world and assess if the designs are still valid. In particular, the UX design for health and fitness apps requires a field test. Samsung Health designers conduct their field tests while running, eating, and sleeping, and they continue to bridge the gap between the app and the real world. Among all the items dealt with in Samsung Health, exercising is an experience with many variables. Needless to say, there is a wide variety of workouts people enjoy, and the way of enjoying it and the environment they are enjoyed in are different for each one of us, even within the same workout. Let's take running. Our users run in different places, including the track, road, trail, and gym. There is also a variety of weather conditions to consider. Some days are so sunny, and some days we have a heavy rain. Also, users often lay up in thick clothing and gloves in the cold and snow. Furthermore, everyone has a different purpose for exercising. Some users exercise while commuting, some enjoy light exercise for fun, and some prepare for a race where every minute and every second counts. Every day, we conduct field tests in such a diverse environment, predict circumstances our users might face, and adjust our designs accordingly. I'd like to show you a few examples. What you see here is a watch screen during exercise. Some of you might not like the look so much. The screen is mainly made up of numbers, which to some people may look too plain, basic, or unstylish. Some might point out that these numbers are shown without units of measurement. But you can't say if this exercise screen is good just looking at it on the monitor. The true assessment happens in the field where you will experience various situations. On some days, you might have a strong sunlight and not be able to see the screen clearly. Let's not forget that you might even have your sunglasses on. On top of that, exercise is not a static activity. You'd raise your wrist and quickly glance at the screen while running. Your vision may be shaky, you may be out of breath. The attention you'll be able to afford on the screen will be very limited. Our primary goal is that you should be able to recognize the necessary information in a short time in such tough conditions. The units like kilometers and BPM are certainly important information for your exercise, but we eliminated even these units of measurement and designed the screen so that users can focus on the changing numbers. Now, let's look at a pain point that some users experienced when operating the device. After launching the watch on the market, we used to receive customer feedback, saying that the user's exercise session stopped, even though the user did nothing on the watch. This phenomenon, called a ghost touch, happens when a drop of rain or sweat falls on the screen or when the screen brushes or wet sleeve or skin. Normally, when we try to make our devices easier to use, we reduce the number of steps needed to operate a device and simplify the process. However, the priority changes during exercise. We have to go safe, even if a bit more inconvenient and time-consuming. 
to prevent the user from unintentionally losing their data. Therefore, we have adopted these measures using a physical button and the swipe interaction. So an exercise session can be stopped only when the user wants. Our aim is to protect your precious exercise data, not only with technology, but also with the user interface. We've launched a new function with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro called Route to Workout. When exercising, it's hard to look at your phone to follow a map, but having your watch guide you to new places will be a fantastic experience. However, a watch and map aren't exactly a great fit, unfortunately. It's not easy to fit the map, route, and navigation information on such a small screen. So we had to decide the optimal amount of information for each moment, as well as the optimal times to provide such information. The maps scale plays a very important role in determining the amount of information to be displayed on the watch. But you can't expect the user to adjust the maps scale every time while exercising. So we found a way to optimize the map scale according to the user's situation. When there's a change of direction, like turning left or right, the map should be zoomed in so the user understands which turn to take. The map scale should be adjusted appropriately so that the user's current location and the turning point appear as clearly as possible on the small screen. On the other hand, when the user stops for a second and touches the map to look for something, the map is automatically zoomed out with fewer elements overlaid so the user can view a wider area. The distance remaining also appears to let them know how well they are following the overall route. We tested all these conditions repeatedly with our development team to optimize the map's scale and the amount of information. So, as you have seen, the UX design for route workout is completed not at the desk, but on the road. As you've seen, UX design starts with understanding our customers. We listen to their voices and they analyze data to see how they actually use our product. We place ourselves in the environment where they use our product. In the process, we discover more of what they want and where they face challenges. The results of this customer focus help us to create better designs. Thank you.